What's up, guys? Welcome back. This is Retro Savker. Today, we're doing a review of a game called 10 Miles to Safety. Now, there is five different classes you can play. The first class you can play is a brawler, which has more health and does melee damage. The guy is basically a beast with a bat, but kind of sucks when you're behind barriers. Basically, his main ability is useless behind barriers because he knocks down the barriers when he swings his melee weapon. To me, he's useless. The second class is the Engineer. Now this guy is the man at building stuff. I found this character very useful in the game if you're playing with other people because you can use his ability to help build stuff really fast. Also he uses less materials and the things he builds are much stronger. The third class is the Crafter. The Crafter seemed to loot really fast which I didn't think was part of her abilities but I guess it's a bonus. I didn't really see how her crafting skills played a big part in the game other than making explosives and bandages faster. I'd like to see a crafting station where you can upgrade your weapons. Maybe this is in the game, I just didn't see it. The fourth class is the looter, which basically he can loot really fast and you get more stuff. Also when you're looting, you loot quietly so the zombies won't hear you because you have to beat on stuff to open it. I feel like this would be a good single player character to play if you're playing by yourself. Now the fifth and finer class is the shooter and I play this class the most. She has a better chance of getting headshots and she gets a buff when using a sniper rifle. It kind of sucks when you're playing with your buddy because you can shoot him in the face and knock him down pretty easy. So the general idea of this game is to make it to 10 miles of safety, which I found out you'll be doing a lot of running. I mean a lot of running, hence 10 miles of safety. It kind of seems repetitive at times. One thing that kind of sucked while you're running, the zombies don't really pose any threat to you. You can just run right by them. So it kind of made it pretty easy running through the town. When you're not running through the town, you're looking for that sweet loot and buildings to help upgrade your stuff. If you go too far without upgrading your stuff, the game will let you know that you're under gear. So you need to go find better stuff. The reason you need better gear is the zombies get harder and harder the farther you go. Once it hits nighttime, you're gonna have to hunker down and prepare to murk some zombies. The zombies become more powerful at night and they will swarm you wherever you are. As you're doing your marathon run to safety, you'll come across these little events that you can get good loot from. There's pretty much three events and they didn't vary much other than the objectives you had to do. So the weapons they have are your typical weapons you see in all the zombie games. They said you have 20 different weapons, but I've only seen a few so far. There are different tiers of weapons you get, but the aiming of the weapons seems to be based a lot off RNG, which I thought was dumb. One thing I didn't like is it took way too long to see two different types of zombies. It was a quarter way through the game until we saw the hazmat zombie. Other than that, I thought the game had a good idea behind it, but it seemed kind of repetitive and it got boring after a few hours of playing it. So, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below if there's any other games you guys like to see me review. If you guys like this video, please click that thumbs up. 
Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And like always, have a fantastic day.